Hey guys, good evening. I'm not sure if you can see me. I can't see myself, so hopefully this will work. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a happy and a good uh, June 1st today on Monday. I cannot believe it's already June and the summer's here and the sun is out. It's going to be a, um, a good summer. Let's. I know it's been a very different year. We've had many trials and many struggles and um, just many difficulties, but I hope that you've also had many joys as well, because just like Christian on his journey, our life has many ups and downs. Well, even if you can't see me, because I'm not sure if it will show me or not, um, just listen, because this is a really good story, and you can turn on your listening ears just like you would for an audiobook. Um, our chapter 6 and 7, chapter 6, a little quick recap from Pilgrim's Progress, was um, Christian was on his journey, and he meets Faithful. If you remember, Faithful was just another uh, Christian on his journey um, to the Celestial City, and he was a faithful Christian, too. He was faithful to always follow Jesus anywhere he went, and he actually met Jesus when um, during some of his trials from what his story that he shares. Also, um, together, Faithful and Christian come up to the Vanity Fair. I don't know if you remember that chapter when um, basically they are tested to the extreme together. They go to this Vanity Fair and um, anyway, everybody's trying to sell them stuff. And they're selling horrible things like not only money and jewelry and clothing, but they're actually selling people and as slaves like women and children. It's just awful. And men. So people are trying to force them to buy stuff and to participate in this fair. And they're standing up for themselves saying, no, no, we only buy the truth. And um, they were thrown into jail, if you recall. And then they were sentenced um, after a trial to death. Uh, so only one ends up actually being sentenced to death, and that's faithful. And if you recall, he was um, ended up hanging on a cross after uh, being beaten and then having to carry his cross. Reminds us a lot like what happened to Jesus. Um, but faithful, I mean Christian, actually gets to leave the town. Um, it says the one who rules over everything helped Christian escape from the cage where he was kept. So um, the one who rules over everything, I wonder if you know who that is. And Christian leaves the Vanity Fair, um, and he's singing a song about, a joyful song about the life of his friend Faithful, because he knows that he is actually up in the celestial city at last. So, chapter 8. Its title is, Hopeful Joins Christian. Christian walked away from Vanity Fair, but he wasn't alone for long. A man named Hopeful left Vanity to catch up with Christian. He had seen and heard Christian and Faithful. He knew they spoke the truth and decided to go over to their side. He met up with Christian and promised to be his companion on the narrow way. They walked along and soon came to a man named Mr. Byans. Where are you from? Hopeful and Christian, um, they asked. Well, I'm from the town of Fair Speech, he said. My friends and family are very rich people, and they have a comfortable life. Byand was a proud man and loved his high position and easy life in a town where, sad to say, people tell lies all the time. So he's a proud man who... Um, lives in a place where people lie all the time. Byand continued, In fair speech, we are very religious, but not strict as some people are. We don't believe in a religion that means you have to go through hard or dangerous things. And we like being religious when life is really easy, especially when other people approve of us. Now Christian had read in the Bible about people who are not the king's true servants. So he said, We can't travel together then. If you go with us and follow the king, you must go through the hard times as well as the easy. And you must be willing to follow Christ, whether you are poor or rich. Don't force me. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Don't force me to believe the way you do, said Byans. Let me walk with you and do what I want. Not a step further unless you change your mind, Christian said firmly. Unless you change your ways, he says firmly. Very well, then, answered Byans. Go on alone. I'll follow what I believe and wait until someone comes along who thinks like me. Soon, Byans was joined by three friends from his school days, Mr. Moneylove, Mr. Hold On to the World, and Mr. Save All. Their teacher, Mr. Greitman, had taught them how to cheat, tell lies, and pretend to be religious. These friends used their reason to twist God's word to defend the wrong things they believed. Who are those two men, Byan's friends? asked. Oh, they are pilgrims also, replied Byan, but not our sort. If you disagree with them, they won't have anything to do with you, and they follow their king in all kinds of weather. They risk their lives for God and stay on the path even when it is dangerous. I prefer to wait for the good weather and to make sure that I am always safe. Byans and his friends caught up to Christian and hopeful and called out, Let's talk some more. What's wrong with using religion and acting religious so we can get rich and have an easy life? If that is the only way, we can do it. Christian said clearly, Having money isn't a sin, but it's wrong to go after Christ because you hope that you'll get rich by following him. Only those who truly are against him would try to do that. The men were shocked at his answer and said nothing. They didn't walk with Christian and Hopeful anymore. Christian and Hopeful kept going across a plain called Ease, where they traveled in peace. Soon afterward, they came to a hill called Lucra. A man named Demas cried out, Come over here and I will show you a rich silver mine. With a little hard work, you may get rich. Let's go and see, said. Let's go and see, said Hopeful, as he started to turn off the path. But Christian pulled him back. No, he said. I've heard of this place. The ground is shaky and many have fallen into the mine and have been badly hurt or killed. Then he called to Demas. Isn't the place dangerous? No, not really, if you're careful, said Demas, turning red because he was lying. Please come over and see, he added with a quick smile. But Christian said firmly, your silver mine is a trap for those who go after it. You've turned away from the narrow path and you're an enemy of the king. Besides, the king would hear the news if we left the narrow path for you. And we would be ashamed when we see him. Demas kept calling out, to them to come over, but the pilgrims went on their way. They said, I bet Bayans and his friends will go to Demas. Sure enough, a little while later, Bayans and his friends came up and went right over to Demas. They were never seen again. Perhaps they fell into the pit or died in the bottom of that mine. Soon, Christian and Hopeful came to a place where a strange white statue of a woman stood by the roadside. Her face was turned away from the path. Written above her head were the words, Remember Lot's wife. I know what this is, Christian said. God turned Lot's wife into a pillar of salt for disobeying his instructions not to look back when the wicked city of Sodom was destroyed. She is both a warning and an example to us, Hopeful realized. I'm glad we didn't go off the path when Demas called us. We can thank God for warning us, and we must never forget it. Then the narrow path went right along the bank of a lovely river. There were trees with delicious fruit, and a pretty green meadow filled with lilies and beautiful flowers. God had put his delightful place here for pilgrims who had been through many hard trials. Christian and Hopeful, tired from all of their travels, rested in this peaceful spot. God always promises to give, um, to give you rest. And he did. He gave them a wonderful spot to rest, even though they're on a dangerous journey with lots of temptation. While there, they drank cool water from the river. They ate fruit. They used the tree leaves God provided for medicine. They sang songs of joy and praise to the king. And each night they lay down in the meadow and slept safely. 
After many days and nights of rest, food, and peace, the pilgrims felt strong again and healthy once more. So they went on their way, leaving the beautiful valley behind. All right, chapter nine, Giant Despair and Doubting Castle. Then the path away from the lovely river was rough and stony. The pilgrims were tired and their feet were very sore. On the left, a fence with steps over it divided the narrow way from a wide green meadow. There was a pretty soft grassy path in the meadow. Hopeful, said Christian, let's walk over there. It looks a lot easier. Well, but what if the path should lead us out of the narrow way, asked Hopeful. Look, it runs close to the fence in the same direction, Chris Christian answered. We'll be fine. So they climbed over the fence into Bypath Meadow onto the soft and easier path. Christian called out to a man ahead of them. Who are you, sir, and where does this path go? Well, my name is Vain Confidence, and this path leads to the Celestial City, he replied. See, I told you so, Christian smiled, looking at Hopeful, and they followed the man. When the night came, they could no longer see him ahead. Suddenly, they heard a cry and a loud crash. Vain Confidence had fallen into a deep pit, put there by the owner of the meadow. Christian and Hopeful called out to him, but there was no answer. Then it began to rain and thunder with terrible lightning. Christian was very sorry that he had convinced Hopeful to take this easier path. Remember, the easier way is not always the better way. Let's turn back, he said, trembling. Perhaps we can find our way again. Then they heard a voice saying, Return to the narrow way. Christian and Hopeful tried to go back, but it was so dark and the water began to rise so high that they nearly drowned. Finally, they found a shelter and sat under it. The weary pilgrims fell asleep. Not far from where they slept lay Doubting Castle, owned by a giant named Despair. Ooh, this doesn't sound like a good place. Doubting Castle and Despair Giant. The next morning, he found Christian and Hopeful asleep on his property. Dun, dun, dun. You have no right to be here, the giant said in a loud, gruff voice. Come along with me. Despair forced them to go with him, grabbing and pushing them across the fields. He locked them in a very dark, dirty, and smelly dungeon. They were miserable without anything to eat or drink from Wednesday to Saturday. Wow. That's like almost the whole week. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's four whole days. Giant Despair had a wife whose name was Diffidence. She didn't trust anyone or anything. She was cruel, and she told her husband to beat the prisoners. So the next morning, Despair used a huge club to beat Christian and Hopeful so hard that they could not even move. They spent all that day and night lying there, weak, hungry, and moaning with pain. The next morning, giant despair mocked them. Why choose to keep living since you are in such awful pain, he said coldly, telling them it would be better if they just killed themselves. It's horrible. Nobody should ever think like that. God values every single life. But you can tell they're putting, this giant is putting doubt in their minds, think, making them think that, think less of themselves. He's saying, why do you choose to keep living since you're in such awful pain? The pilgrims pleaded, please let us go. This made the giant so angry that he rushed at them to beat them up again. But before he got to them, he had a fit of weakness and could not use his hands at all. So he left them there. Christian said, we are so miserable and in so much pain. Dying just seems to be a better choice than living like this. Sounds like they're trying to give up, huh? But the king says that you shall not murder, Hopeful said. How much more then are we forbidden to do what giant despair says and kill ourselves? For despair was living up to his name, trying to discourage the pilgrims so that they would lose hope and disobey their king. Let's be patient and endure this for a while. We may be released, but let us not be murderers. 
Hopeful continued to encourage his friend. Hold on a little while longer, he said. Maybe our great God, remember he made the whole world, will cause giant despair to die. Or despair may forget to lock us in the next time. Or we may be able to just slip away if he gets into another fit of weakness. And with that, Hopeful convinced Christian to hold on to hope. Giant Despair found them barely alive the next morning, and he went into another terrible rage. The pilgrims were filled with fear once again. Christian even fainted. After Giant Despair left them, they talked again about suicide. Hopeful argued against it a second time, saying, Remember what you've already gone through and survived. Apollyon couldn't destroy you. You made it safely through the valley of the shadow of death. And you showed great courage at Vanity Fair. And I am a weaker man than you are, Christian. Let's be patient a little longer. As patient as we can be. That night, Diffidence told her husband to take the pilgrims to see the bones and the skulls of those he had already killed. Tell them that within a few days you'll kill them too, she said, with a mean look on her face. Oh my goodness. So she's telling him to take the pilgrims to see the bones and the skulls of those that were already killed by the giant. And that within a few days that they would be killed too. When morning came, despair showed the pilgrims the bones and the skulls in the castle yard and told them that he was going to kill them. Then he yelled, now go, get back to your cell, your end is coming. With that, the giant punched and beat them all the way back to the prison. They were very weak and faint now, but they had begun to pray, and they prayed all through the rest of the night. Christian suddenly spoke up. How foolish I've been, he cried. We've stayed here all these days when we could have walked out freely. I just remembered I have a little key in my coat next to my heart. It is the key of promise, he said. He tried it on the dungeon door, and with that, the bolt gave way and the door flew open. Oh, he had a little key of promise in his pocket. Christian and Hopeful escaped quietly to the iron gate. The key opened that lock also, but as they opened the gate, it creaked so loudly that it woke up the giant. The giant despair. Just as he tried to run after them, despair had another fit of weakness, and he fell to his knees, unstable to move. Sounds like the power of God to me. The two friends hurried from the castle and ran across the field to the steps by the fence. When they crossed back over the narrow way, they found a large stone and placed it at the steps to warn pilgrims who would come after them. The message on the stone said, This path in By Path Meadow leads to Doubting Castle, which belongs to Giant Despair. He hates the king and tries to destroy pilgrims. Many pilgrims who came after them read what they wrote and escaped that danger. Mm. After this, Christian and Hopeful continued their journey on the narrow way. They sang about the king's deliverance and their adventures as they went. Ooh, so not only did God deliver them by his promise, they stood on his promise and that promise of God that he would always rescue them and keep them safe is what let them out. And then they did what all good Christians should do is that they um, warned the next crew of believers. The next group of um, people that would be walking the same path, that they would see a sign, a warning, and that they might avoid it. And that's like what we're supposed to do for other people. If we know that there's danger or trouble somewhere, or if we do this, there's danger, or um, that could be uh, not a good idea, we need to warn our friends and our family to follow God and to um, to recognize the evil, to recognize the bad, and to steer clear of it. And if we can do that, we're doing what God asks us to do, to love others um, by keep, like, keeping an eye out for them and by um, helping to keep them on the same path as us, keeping them on the narrow way, uh, just like we are. 
We never want to push anybody off the right, the right path. We always want to help keep people on it. And we pray that there's more people put in our lives, like hopeful and faithful, to come alongside of us and to help guide us and encourage us along the way um, to stay on that narrow path. So we want to hold on to those friendships. Let's uh, pray, guys. I don't know if you can see me or not, and I'm very sorry. My internet's not been the greatest, but um, I will look back and check and see. So let's pray. God, we thank you for um, your story, God, your story of redemption, of you saving us through your son, Jesus. But not only for the salvation, God, but for the journey that we're on. You promise that we're going to have trials and we're going to have difficulties. You promise that there's going to be people in our lives that are going to discourage us, that are going to try to tempt us and lead us away from you. But God, we thank you for that warning. We know to look out, to watch out, and to be on our guard. And God, we also know that you put people in our lives to encourage us and to help us to stay on the path. Help us, God, to discern the difference between friends that are leading us away from you and friends that are leading us closer to you. Help us to encourage our friends that might not be on the right path and guide them to you, closer to you. We love you. Give us courage and boldness as we continue this journey of faith as your believers, as your Christian children. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Well, I love you all, and I hope you're having a wonderful um, summer and have some some, uh, some fun summer plans <laughs> this week. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you all back tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Um, if you don't join me live, that's totally fine. I understand our schedules are very different, but uh, just go back and watch these videos and enjoy them. If you're going on a journey somewhere, you can listen to them in the car as like an audio book or um, as you're going to bed at night. So I hope that they bless you as they've blessed uh, my kids and I as we go to sleep. And I'll talk to you all tomorrow. All right. Bye, guys.